Welcome to this webinar where Arun Pratihast and Abidemi Eloso from Wageningen University will tell us about the COCOA ontology they have developed within the COCOA SOL project. So this webinar is organized by the Ontologies Community of Practice of the CGI platform for Big Data and Agriculture. And I'm Celine Aubert, the Communication Coordinator of the COP, and I will facilitate the webinar today. Let me introduce you to our two speakers, Dr. Arun Kumar Pratiast. He is the Senior Data Scientist at Wageningen University and research with a passion for the effective application of data and technology for forest, agriculture, and nature conservation. And Abidemi Eloso, who is a geoinformatician researcher at Wageningen University and Research, and holds a master degree in remote sensing and geographic information. Arun will start with the presentation of the cocoa soil ontology and its context, uh, the context of its development, and Abidemi will follow with a deep dive into the ontology. Over to you, Arun. Thank you. So thank you for the invitation. Uh, today we are going to talk about cocoa ontology, a collaborative pathway for fair data. So though we are presenting, but there is many people behind the development of this ontology. So a bit of outline from our presentation. So I'll give an overview of our whole journey of this cocoa ontology development process. Um, and then we'll demonstrate you how far we are um, in a detailed label. And then we'll go for some conclusions and then we'll take a question and answer. So let, uh, let me start with the cocoa agroforestry system. Uh, as many of you know, cocoa is a major global uh, commodity and its production involves millions of smallholder farmers, especially in the West Africa. And also cocoa agroforestry is a carbon source as a carbon sink and brings wide range of ecological biodiversity and conservation benefits. So it is quite important for economical, but also for the conservation perspective. But changing climate of coming decades is expected to alter the suitability of many current cocoa production sites. This is one of the research papers published by the CIRT where you see different uh, current uh, suitability map of the cocoa soil, cocoa uh, productions area, co cocoa sites. And you can see from the map that uh, current, uh, the top is current suitability, middle is the uh, projection 2050, and there is the change. And the green is the suitable area and the red is uh, not suitable area. And you can see from suitability change map, that there is a quite a bit of change in the, uh, in the green. That means that there will be lots of cocoa growing area who will not be suitable in 50 years. And that will have the impact on the livelihood. So that means there is a need for the, for the research of the cocoa sector. So research needs the data. And generally speaking, uh, the data for the research is scarce. And available data set is always difficult to reuse because of missing headers, contextual information, sometimes lacks the sharing protocols, and there is no, let's say, collaborative use of this data and reuse. So it creates a big barrier in the science, but also for the business sector. Now, therefore, there is a need for the data discovery, gathering, managing, and harmonizing process for decision making. And it really demands um, the urgent attention, urgent attention for the fair data solution to improve the cocoa uh, sector for the economical, social, and environmental sustainability. Let me give you one very practical example. If you are living in Europe and you have an electric plug from Europe and you want to travel around the world, of course, at this moment you can't travel, but once the COVID situation will be better, then you may travel, but then you can't plug because the plug in the world is in the different system. So you can use to charge your laptop only in these three sockets, but the rest of the sockets are in different formats, so you cannot use it. So what you need basically, you need a universal adapter and we all carry the universal adapter so that our laptop can run. Similarly, in the data domain, we have this universal adapter and that is called ontology. So ontology is a formal representation of a discipline domain. 
So in terms of POCO domain, it represents the whole POCO process. It represents semantic standards, and that can be employed annotated data where key concepts are defined as well as a relationship between different concepts can be established. So this is the core principles of ontology. Ontology provides common language for different kinds of data to be easily interpretable and interoperable, allowing easier aggregation and analysis. So this is the concept. So what we are doing the COCO soil, COCO soil is a program funded by Norwegian government, NORHART funded initiatives, where we want to improve this data situation and improve the efficiency and sustainability of cocoa production by focusing um, on integrated soil fertility management. But within the broader aim, we also want and we are committed for verification of data through research and development and partnership for development arms. So we equally uh, collaborate with the research partner, but also the commercial partner. So what we are thinking, we are thinking about the long-term process. And that's why the program has established number of core and satellite trial sites around the world. So the map shows you the established current status of the um, core trials and satellite trials. We have 10 core trial sites, each of two hectares, Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, and 393 satellite trials. And these trials are may increase in the future. But these trials have a systematic design um, of all the protocols. So what does it mean? We have a plot label, we have a systematic plot design. It is 15 by 15 grid. The plant side, we measure the plant height, DPS, all this uh, phenology. So everything has been documented how to, uh, in the protocols and measure in a systematic the map shows you how the plot has been designed. So within the big plots, you have the smaller plots, which is 15 by 15. We have the cocoa plantation separation, three meters apart. So each plot has 25 cocoa trees. So these all things has been um, spatially produced. And we have established the label barcode in a standard way from field to trial plot to the plant level so that there will be a uniqueness in the data collection process. So this is the first step that we want to make sure that the data which we are going to collect, it will be systematic and it can store. Then we have also developed the ecosystem of open data services and that establish the data collection, data storage and analysis and publication. So in the data collection side, we have developed mobile app using open data toolkit. We have developed different data collection forms from the initial site characteristic to the management practice and also the monitoring of these plants. And these all, all data has been collected by scientists, farmers, or our industry partners. And, they all, and all the data set are stored in a relational database, which is PostgreSQL in our site. We have a data storage and analysis block where the data has been curated, quality check has been made, and it has been open for the scientists and for uh, the partners to do the further research and analysis. And then after that, we have the ambition to publish the data through our knowledge portal. But on the on bottom of this, as the, we are committed to data production side, we are busy, but we are also equally focused on the ontology side. And I'm going to talk more about the COCO ontology, what we did. So aim of our ontology is to develop a COCO ontology, which is designed by all, accepted by all, and used by all. Because we think that if the broader community is not involved, then the usability of this product will be less. And thinking that mind, we have defined the sub-objectives. The first objective is to define, describe, and standardize the vocabulary, concept, and relationship between the cocoa farming system and component. Because this is very important, because this 
cocoa growing countries are varied, different countries and each country have their own language, their own way of measuring. So we want to standardize that. Second thing is formalize knowledge about cocoa agronomy and production process. And thirdly, to improve the communication among the stockholders. Because if we don't improve the communication, then the usability of this will be low. And hence, we, it is a bit of a long process, but we are quite happy with this uh, timing. So we started this process in 2019, where we did our first exploration by reviewing the existing ontologies, protocols, and based on that, we develop a small mind maps. After that, we uh, organized different uh, working sessions with the cocoa experts and agronomists, and we revised our concept and came up with the first draft. And then we organized the workshop within the Wageningen and within the consortia, and then we, we review uh, our first draft and then again further re review, uh, improved it. So, and it has been regularly improved over the time. And now we have like more or less a stable person. I'd like to show you a, a bit of journey. So we started first with this mind maps with our cocoa experts and uh, agronomists. Then we had the first version, which was reviewed within the, our Cocoa Soil Research and Development internal team, which around 20 experts. Then we had a second version, which has been re reviewed by 25 experts. We have third person, which has been reviewed by 35 experts. And now basically we have the Cocoa Ontology version four. It is more or less stable to use it. And also we have now enough data. We have like the project is running last four years. So we have collected now enough data that can show all the class and relationship in practice. So let me show you that we didn't want to build something which is completely new and that uh, that's not our uh, aim. Our aim is to really build on the existing ontologies. And that's what we also consider. So this cocoa ontology is uh, basically complementary and co-design of the existing ontology. So for example, we take part of unit ontology, food ontology, environmental ontology, also agronomy ontology, which is de uh, developed by SIGAR. So we are in a rigorous discussion and communication. Also, they help us to uh, refine and develop our ontology and they're closely involved in whole development process. So now if you see the right side, side this is our cocoa ontology at this moment. We have a different uh, classes. Of course, it is more tailored with the cocoa uh, context, but these are the more refined classes we have now. So what is the advantage? So just a bit of advantage. So, so for example, but now we have this very complex data collection system in the cocoa soil context. It just gives you very simple relational schema. And you can see that there is a company, there is a core trial, satellite trial, there is the institutions, there is different ODK or mobile data collection forms. So it becomes very uh, relational schema. And to query the data, you need to really and understand the relationship. It is very difficult. Of course, you need to be expert to do it. Whereas in the, if you say, uh, so what we are doing, we are to transfer this with this graph database, which is a bit more easier to query and get to understand the interlinked between this process. So let me show you one very simple example. So for example, there is a field. So that field can belong to the farm. The farmer can be the person, and then the field may have a geolocation. So, and these geolocations may belong to the certain administrative unit. That administrative unit may be in the country. Similarly, the field may have some tree. That tree belongs, maybe cocoa tree, maybe some other tree. And then the field may have some measurement practice, for example, phenology measurement and may have some management practice. So you can see there is a, for example, fertilizer management. You can see that one field has these different activities that is called different classes, and it may have the subclasses and have further, uh, further classes and it has like relations. 
so that can be so if you have a data collection form then you have like each of these may be scattered and you really need to know how to query the data and sometimes it is very difficult to understand where is in the data in graph database or like ontology perspective then it's easy relatively because of the different relations and arrow you know that okay how so for example this field have a plot plot has a administrative unit and it has administrative geometry so for example administrative unit can go further so it has like first administrative unit country then province district village so it can go further similarly the geometry can be the line point or polygon and then the person can be agronomist extension officer farmer researcher scientist and so on similarly the crop can be maize or the tree crop that can be cocoa or cedri and so each of these can be can go further but i think it's better still it is very complex to show with the powerpoint all the things and that's why i like to invite my colleague abidemi and he can show you directly in our uh, post uh, that how these classes are interrelated good afternoon everyone uh, so presently this is what our coco ontology look like and it's been developed by a team of experts uh, like um, Arun said earlier and this has been a collaborative e effort from various um, stakeholders and uh, so you could see uh, on the left hand side is the various classes that we have within the ontology and we have the administrative unit and uh, we, we have the administrative unit and the administrative unit consists of the first administrative unit uh, second administrative unit the first the administrative unit consists of first administrative unit second administrative unit and country and so what this what this tries to show is it tries to show the various relationship that the administrative unit has so for instance a, tri a trial site is located within an administrative unit and an administrative unit uh, an agro has an agroecological zone and um, a country is also uh, within an administrative unit and monitoring and survey uh, that evaluation survey is conducted uh, within an administrative unit and if we go further we have uh, the we have the crop and we have the crop variety so for the crop variety it talks about the different types of variety of crops uh, we have the cocoa variety and we have the uh, types of crop for the cocoa variety. It talks about the types of variety of cocoa, and it talks about Foresto, Corello, and the likes. And it also, there is also emphasis uh, on the type of uh, relationship existing within this ontology. Take, for instance, the trial site. Uh, this is a trial site. And here it's trying to show us that, okay, uh, it's trying to show us that a trial site management practice, the management practice is conducted within a trial site. Trial site is a type of a trial, which could be a core trial or a satellite trial. And within a satellite trial site, there is a field. And um, also there is a nozzle within a trial site. And also clim climate parameters are also performed. Also some climatic uh, measurements are also taken within the trial site. And the trial site is also located within an administrative unit. And if we go further to actually tend to see, we could see the various types of management practices that is happening uh, within the trial site. Uh, we have the pruning management, the pest management. Uh, we have um, agrochemical management. Uh, we have irrigation management. And we have a pod yield analysis. And we have, um, it also tells us that this management practice is happening both at the field level and also at the plot level. And if we, if we go further to see, you see that, okay, it tells us that okay, plot has a measurement and um, on a plot, crop are also planted on a, on a plot. And this type of crop include, it could be the shade, um, the tree crop or the, the maize. And under the tree crop, we have the shade tree. We have the shade tree. It could be the shade tree, which includes banana and the likes. And we have um, the cocoa tree as well. So, and it also tells us that, okay, there are different kinds of measurements taking place uh, within this, at the plot level, 
And the measurement could also take place at the three level, depending on the kind of measurement uh, that is uh, performed at a particular time. And from this, we could see, if maybe two upcoming Okay, so here we see um, the different kinds of measurements uh, that can be performed on a plot. We have the agrochemical management that talks about the fertilize, fertilizer management and the uh, pesticide and herbicide application. And it also talks about the initial site characterization. Uh, it talks about on-field measurement. On-field measurements includes the phenology. Uh, that is the on-field measurement includes phenology, uh, soil fertility indicator, and the maize uniformity. Uh, under the phenology, that is where we have the different types of uh, measurement that are, are specific uh, to cocoa agronomy. And that is where we have the, uh, that is where we have the cocoa harvest season, where we have the pod yield, the, uh, the tree height, the biomass, the tree crown, and so on and so forth. So what we've tried to do is uh, to try to uh, simplify uh, this process and, and show what is possible and uh, what we are trying to achieve in the long term. So what we try to do is uh, uh, we try to um, model um, all this relationship within the ontology. And this um, ontology is now uh, being prepared uh, within uh, a, a graph database. And at the moment, we are using a, a new 4J graph database. So we we'll just try to show you an example of um, how easy it's going to be to query some of these data, uh, data set and to compare uh, results from one um, location to the other and so that the best uh, management practices uh, can be uh, adopted by her. Uh, so this is just uh, a sample of the, of the script uh, that I made. And um, so to take for instance, this is the new 4J inter interface using the uh, so once I have my script, uh, we just need to load all the data sets. Now we see that all the nodes have been loaded. And um, so it's a lot easier. Based on this, you could, you could see on the left-hand side, you have um, the various relationships that were actually mentioned uh, within, the, within the graph database. So for instance, uh, somebody wants, I've talked about country, and here yeah, you could see a country. Somebody wants to see, okay, what are the different countries? Uh, within the graph database, and you could see. So, and it tells us, okay, this particular country is actually. This particular country is actually this. This is um. This particular country is actually hosting. Is look, okay. It's telling us that this trial site is located in this particular country and has an administrative unit, uh, Boke, and uh, it's in Cote d'Ivoire. The name of the country is in Cote d'Ivoire. And if we look at this country, this other one as well, it tells us that, okay, this is another country. Uh, it has a trial site. Uh, it has a trial site called SoCal 004, and is located in center uh, in Cameroon. So this way, it makes it easy for us to actually query data and visualize uh, the output of data set. And another thing is this, um, this is showing us the different yield for each of the trial sites uh, that we just um, converted to graph database. So from this, it's a lot easier. And uh, from a glance, stakeholders are able to see the uh, trial site with the maximum output of yield. And this could give um, an indication as to adopt the best practices that is actually happening on that particular site across other uh, trial sites. So this tend to improve this this tend to this tend to improve um, communication and also tend to improve uh, uh, tend to improve in integrated soil fertility management practice that the project is trying to achieve. So basically, that is it for now. I would like to hand over to Aaron. So you can. Yeah. So thank you for the demonstration and quick view of our graph database. So. Uh, I'd like to give you some uh, conclusion, though it is uh, it's a remark, I'll say it's not an actual conclusion because the work is still in progress. But uh, we have standardized vocabulary, concept, and relationship. 
between cocoa agronomy and production process. And I think the existing version is quite stable and we can start using it. So that's, uh, we are going to release soon. And, and the good point of uh, this whole ontolo cocoa ontology is that it has been co-designed with the stakeholders in mind, and we have built on the existing ontology. So we consider the all existing ontology, which is available, for example, unit and agronomy ontology, so on. And broader use and review is still required. So if you find the, so please use it. And if you find any, uh, anything is still missing, then we are happy to consider and adopt it because the aim of this ontology is designed by all except by all and used by all. And we really want to stick with that principle. And for the future, we want to have a knowledge portal. We want to launch in order to show how and enable the interoperability of the focus for data set. And, the, and we wish that it will um, drive more innovation in the focus research. So saying that we have some resource so there is two places where you can find the Cocoa Ontology. There is a Git link, which is a host in the Wacken University. It is more for the development. So if you want to be a developer or you want to contribute, then you can also be part of that. But there is also the free link, the existing version. You can download and play around. Uh, we use Portigy, that is open source. And then you, you can visualize it through the software, but you can also use other existing software for that. Acknowledgement, we have a long list of acknowledgement, but these are some key people where we have multiple times contacted and then they were really core of this whole ontology development process. We really want to acknowledge and thanks them. Also, we, these are some key partners within the Focus Well project. They are collecting, helping us to collect the data and setting up all our trial sites. And thank you so much. Thank you very much, Arun and Abidemi, for uh, this uh, presentation of the Cocoa ontology and also for the deep dive into the ontology. It was very nice to see uh, how you uh, use it to manage your data. So we are now at our question and answer uh, session. So I see that Ranjana, you, you um, added some uh, comments in the chat. Would you like to uh, say them live and maybe discuss um, your view with uh, Arun and uh, Abidemi? Yeah, sure. Uh, good afternoon uh, for that uh, present those presentations and um, surely I would like to um, um, congratulate the team for having this because I think this is the first, uh, uh, first attempt for a database for, um, uh, for COCO that I have seen so far. So for me, it's just the terminologies that, that, that you know, I would, I would change. The terminology for ontology is totally different than data management. I think this is more like data management than ontology. Ontology is for traits, you know, for breeders mainly for traits. Like if one breeder in one country is taking the trait in a certain way, the same, same trait in a different country by another breeder should be done in similar ways. So that's the meaning of the ontology. That's what I wanted to just say. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for remarks. I think I, there is no point to disagree at that point. But what we saw in our, uh, let's say, in Cocos World case, and that's why I put it a bit more like ontology. And there is also now, if you see the big tech company, they start more using this graph database ontology. Because the problem with, I don't know, have you looked at it? The, the actual storage of this or the mobile data system. So what it does basically that it try to help client easy to send data. So that means that if we have a farm and we have many groups of the farm, and if you have the complex project like CocoSoil and this Coco, then you get like database which have more than 2000 tables. And it's all the small tables and interrelation is very difficult. So in that sense, I was telling this data management, maybe if you have ontology first, 
and then based on that you can design your uh, relational database but it's just a perspective i think yeah so i'm it's my personal feeling like i said uh, Rajana, thank you for your feedback uh, what we discovered um during the kickoff of the project was that uh, this is a project that is taking place across uh, different um, countries and across different continents. And so there was need for us, for the stakeholders to actually come to an agreement um, according to terms and definition of terms. So take for instance, um, the word cacao itself um, is an ambiguous word. To so some, um, uh, it means um, the, the, the cacao, as the cacao powder or the cocoa powder, as you call it, while to some um, it means the cocoa as a tree. And um, even when you talked about um, harvesting of um, cocoa cocoa pots, uh, this uh, there are different measurements and different uh, parameters that are used across um, different countries. So there was need for the consortium to actually come together and uh, come up with an agreed and standardized way of doing this which was what gave birth to this uh, cocoa ontology. So that if we are talking about a term in Nigeria, it's meaning the same thing in Cameroon, and it's meaning the same thing in Ecuador, and as well meaning the same thing in Indonesia. So that there is no misconception or miscarriage of um, terms and definition. Thank you. Thank you, Abidami. Milko, do you want to share your, your comments uh, alive with us? Okay. Uh, no, I was just uh, sort of saying that uh, ontologies, I mean, the use of graphs and uh, the way of organizing thought and, and data that way is actually used very much in data management. Uh, the use of ontologies definitely is, is very, very uh, important when you're standardizing data. But uh, using graphs or this kind of uh, reasoning or organization of data, that, that's a lot of, uh, it's very much a sort of data management tool also, beyond the fact that it actually uh, allows communities to gather around concepts and sort of build uh, th thought maps or, or let's say uh, well, ontologies, basically. That's just what I wanted to say with that. Uh, uh, comment. Yep. Thank you, Wilco. So now Elizabeth uh, has a question. Yeah. Thank you, Celine. Thanks for the presentation, Aronel Abidemi. I just have a question about the classification of first uh, your traits related to yield, because as you may know, we lead the crop ontology. And the crop ontology classify those type of traits under the agronomic trait class and not in phenology, because for us, phenology is related to the development stages. And additionally, a measurement for us is a trait plus a method plus a unit. It's not directly a class in an ontology. So just could you just explain why you did such uh, choices? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. I think we we are expecting that uh, question. Uh, Evidemi, do you want to explain? Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, um, like uh, like uh, Arun has explained earlier, uh, this is a collaborative effort, and um, we had so many people uh, from different um, spectrum including people from SIGA, people from the crop ontology team as well. So what we, what, what, what we had was there has been several reviews and um, we decided on this uh, based on the peculiarity of um, cocoa as, as, as a, based on the peculiarity of cocoa. And then um, when we looked at so many factors, uh, we decided to actually uh, make measurement as a class. And if, I don't know, if, if, if you go further to look at it, um, there are under, under measurements as well, we have what we call the on-field and off-field measurements. And under, under off-field measurements, there are different kinds of measurements that happens. And under on-field, there are also certain measurements that happen. And these for us are, are peculiar to cocoa tree. And we felt the best way uh, 
to model it without giving, uh, causing so much um, uproar and uh, would be to have a phenology as, as, as a class. Initially, it was even a stand standalone class, but it was agreed after a series of review that it should be under, since it's a form of measurement, it should come under uh, measurement, uh, a subclass of measurement and not just a um, standalone, uh, which is why it's actually happening within, um, it's actually, located within the measurement. And it, uh, like the yield as well that you talked about, we have, uh, let me quickly, I want to sh show something. So uh, so for us, um, you see, uh, we have measurements and uh, we have been yield dogmas, the likes, just like we have here. And these these are actually things that are actually uh, peculiar uh, to COCO agronomy. So that's the reason why it's actually appearing um, under the phenology class, but you know, knowledge keeps evolving and it keeps um, it keeps developing. So nothing is cast in stone. If there are superior arguments, which I believe will exist uh, in the nearest future, amendments can be made because the essence of the ontology itself is actually a collaborative um, effort. So once you have a view such view can be submitted and um, it will be reviewed by the stakeholders and they will take a decision on it. That's just my thought. Thank, Thank you, Bidemi. You. Simon was asking, where can this data be assessed? In terms of data sets, uh, yeah. there is what you call um, an agreement uh, within the consortium that there should be a cooling off period. Since it's an ongoing research, um, I think, uh, there is a, there is a given um, there is an agreement that maybe if after a, after the um, expiration of the project, then maybe a year or months after, then the data will become available for public usage. Yeah, but for the ontology, the ontology can be assessed uh, by her. Okay. Thank you, Abidemi. Uh, Ranjana, you I, I see that you have an end uh, raised. Yeah, uh, I just want to ask this question to even Elizabeth uh, and um, the Coco Soil uh, his database. I know that there has been some um, Coco ontologies that has been developed in the past. Um, how are these being linked with this current uh, database? Or this is going the Coco ontologies are going to stay standalone, and this will be standalone, or there is a there is going to be some efforts to bring them together. Thank you. Um, in terms of cocoa ontology, uh, when we started this initiative, we couldn't find any. Though there are what you call um, definition of terms, but when you talked about an extensive cocoa ontology, uh, we did not come across any. And paradventure, uh, we have some definition of terms which we considered because there are so many terms we found useful and relative uh, to cocoa soils um, program. Some we took from um, um, the World um, Cocoa Agroforestry Initiative and World Cocoa Foundation, quite a number of them. So what we try to do is to integrate all these um, definition of terms and to actually link uh, such to the uh, cocoa soils ontology that we are developing. And um, if anyone, if we come across uh, many cocoa ontology, it will be appropriate to actually link it to what we are doing because that is the way to go. Thank you. Hi, Ranjana. Um, so uh, yeah, you mean, I suppose a cacao ontology that is embedded into the breeding management system of the integrated breeding platform. This is the only one I know uh, and that uh, is embedded into BMS. So we don't have it available online um, but I think this is because it was specific to a project. And then um, it encompasses the traits proposed by breeders. Um, and the ontology developed by the, the Cocoa Soil uh, project is a bit different in, in its scope because it integrates the, the soil management. The idea being that it will help to to combine data to understand uh, how the, the quality of the soil impact the cocoa production, for example. So it's um, 
the scope of this ontology is different from the breeder traits. Uh, however, if, if the BMS uh, ontology is uh, published publicly, we may find a way to, to connect them because of course, if you are measuring yield uh, in your trials, or if you are measuring some of the agronomic threats that are included into the breeders management system, then we could make a, a mapping or a connection of the two ontology through this uh, set of traits. I hope it answers your, your question, Angela. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Elizabeth, for, for um, actually this perspective. And I know that, uh, you know, uh, BMS has uh, COCO included in that. And um, unfortunately, we cannot have the soil management or soil data into it still. But, you know, uh, this is where I get a bit... Uh, uh, concerned that each project comes up with their own uh, system of data management or whatever, and then it just discontinues or it does not um, flow or it is restricted use. And can we can we have um, a database uh, where we can have the crop ontologies and we can have all the data, uh, including the genomic data, phenotypic data. Uh, soil data or whatever, everything together, which is happening in other crops, when can it happen in COCO, where we can have a centralized depository for all the data, just not project-based, but you know, it also continues after the project has finished. Thank you. I agree that creating ontologies that are project-based may create also silos in terms of vocabularies, but you have to start from somewhere. Uh, for creating an ontology. And um, also you have to, to then, from the data, uh, model your knowledge. And in the case of this cacao ontology that could be called the cacao soil ontology, uh, the modelization is around the, the management of the cocoa field mainly and, and, the, and the soil qualities. So um, they are complementary. They are not competing, but of course, uh, um, to, to get the connection with this ontology and the COCO ontology in BMS, we need the COCO ontology from BMS to be publicly published. Then we can reuse the terms and then we can re reuse the unique identifiers of the concept in the information systems. So as soon as BMS release a COCO ontology, we can work on, on making those ontologies co co be connected and support uh, the creation of a uh, data repository, as long as the data uh, makes sense to be together and they are also open, because I think there are also some data coming from the private sector. But um, we could plan to have that in a, in a next step as well. Uh, try to see how BMS is managing the ontology, publish it. And then uh, perhaps Marie-Angé could like to complement, but as soon as you have uh, uh, those data properly described, the ontologies, we could use uh, the breeding API, for example, uh, to bring some of the soil data uh, aside the breeders data. Uh, this could be a technological solution, but still you need your data to be publicly available or accessible at least. Arun, or if you want to compliment, please. Yeah, yeah I'd like to add something. This, uh, thanks, Elizabeth, for giving the broader perspective and Ranjana for uh, raising this uh, quite uh, interesting dialogue about the data availability. This is a practical issue in many of these research projects, but I think in Cocoswell project, we are. Um, we have thought about this, and that's why we have this uh, R&D and P and public partnership model. And that means that we are establishing this core trial sites, and these have the long-term perspective. So we are thinking to have a 10-year or 15-year um, experiment should go on. And that's why um, we believe that, yeah, uh, I can't guarantee, but we believe that we will have a long-term database and that will help the whole um, community. And we are working towards it. Thank you, Arun, Elizabeth, and Ranjana. So I don't see any more questions. I will now hand it over to Elizabeth Arnaud, the complete. Thank you. 
So I wish to thank uh, our two speakers for this uh, very good uh, webinar and all the attendees for the good questions. So it helps also thinking about uh, the future. If you want to have news of the COCO ontology, please contact directly uh, Arun and Abidemi. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.